Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening based on wherever you are. Today I am presenting uh, information and the topic of this uh, information is or research is why Europe is a good market for export of fruits and vegetable. So when we talk about Europe, so we are discussing or talking about 27 countries uh, in, in total. Uh, as a together so Europe is a big uh, continent uh, when we talk about the population of Europe so we can say in uh, 2020 the Europe population is approaching to 450 million it's almost approaching to 500 uh, million uh, people around 27 countries so it's a big population which is a rich population which is have a, a good uh, buying power and uh, the, the demand of uh, fruits and vegetables is consistent in Europe. So what are the population projections? So when we talk about uh, the population projections, so we can see that in uh, 2030, its uh, population is uh, 450 million. And uh, when we move to 2050, it's uh, dropping to around 440 to 43 uh, people in uh, 27 different uh, European countries. So we talk about the what is the import export ratio of the European Union. So import export ratio of European Union is one uh, that is very good. That is almost a very good figure uh, one. And uh, when we talk about the highest import export ratio is of uh, uh, China other than uh, European Union that is more than one person 1.25 then is Brazil, Canada, Mexico, Japan, India and United States. Russia have small share in international trade is so when we talk about the imports of goods into the European Union so we can say in 2020 uh, this uh, European Union that uh, 27 countries have uh, imported goods worth uh, 1600 billion euros and uh, even it touches 1800 uh, cross 1800 billion euros to 2000 billion euros so it's a really big market it's not only a market of fruits and vegetable but also of other commodities export of goods uh, by european union uh, when we talk about the export of uh, goods from european union so we can see it's in 2020 it's almost cross uh, 2000 billion euros and in 2020 it's uh, dropped down to 17 1700 uh, billion euros so uh, now we talk about what is the share of fruits and vegetable in the import of uh, overall import of a european union so we can see that uh, this figure is of 2020 uh, so uh, the overall 44 uh, percent of uh, fruits and vegetables are imported into a world uh, import of fruits and vegetables the share of uh, Europe is 44% and the rest of world is 56% and among those uh, uh, those 44% uh, uh, the big share goes to Germany that is almost 10% then is Netherlands which is 6% uh, the share of imports uh, the fruits uh, world uh, fruits and vegetable uh, import share of uh, different uh, European countries then number third is United Kingdom which is not the part of uh, European Union nowadays but its share is 6%, then France is 5%, Spain is 2%, Belgium is 2% uh, and rest of Europe is 14%. So when we talk about the export, uh, import of fruits and vegetables into uh, Europe, uh, so in billions, uh, so what are different countries which are contributing to these imports? So in uh, different years from 2016 to 2020, so we can see that the import of fruits and vegetables into a European Union has uh, crossed 15 billion euros. Uh, overall, uh, the trade of fruits and vegetables into a European Union has crossed the figure of 15 billion. In 2019, it has even uh, crossed 18 billion and in 2020 it has crossed 17 billion and the share of developing countries is less than 5 billion euros so it has great potential countries have great potential of doing business uh, in import of fruits and vegetable or export of fruits and vegetable with the european union the rest of the world is share is less than 1 billion 
euros uh, in european market in market so why it is imp so important to to consider uh, exporting uh, fruits and vegetables to europe or european union uh, because uh, europe uh, the percentage of uh, people uh, involved with agriculture is uh, uh, very low only a uh, european union as a whole is the, the percentage of uh, population uh, that is involved with agriculture is almost five percent uh, highest is uh, Romania, Bulgaria and Greece uh, which are approaching uh, Rom Romania is around 20% people are engaged with agriculture then Bulgaria that is around 17% Greece that are around 10% and then our Poland around 7 to 8% then Portugal 7% and uh, in journal the 5% population of Europe is engaged in agriculture so it means so most of the time uh, for the consumption of fruits and vegetables they have to import uh, fruits and vegetables from other neighboring uh, European countries or from third world countries so when we talk about Luxembourg so we can see the population of Luxembourg Malta Belgium or Germany even Sweden and Netherlands so Denmark Denmark and even France um, France and uh, Slovakia Estonia uh, we can see their uh, a percentage of employment uh, into agriculture uh, sector is less than 5% uh, of the total uh, population. So in uh, Europe um, there is a trend of organic farming uh, and uh, we can see that in 2030 that is the, the green uh, European Union Green Deal that is also one point that they want to increase the production of organic uh, foods uh, by 2030. Currently, uh, the big uh, countries uh, with the big organic uh, production includes Hungary, which is 6%, Germany, 8%, Denmark, that is around 11%, then Czech, and then there are other countries which uh, have even more than 20% uh, uh, organic production uh, in their countries. So why uh, Europe is a, a good market? Uh, the uh, one main reason is also the purchasing power and uh, the in individual consumption. Normally, the Euro European people consume 20% uh, of their earnings on the purchase of fruits and vegetables. That is a journal figure. But in general, uh, their purchasing power is uh, very high and uh, they can, uh, their individual consumption capacity is very high. So in general, a European Union have 100% consumption power. Uh, we talk about other countries which have higher con uh, earning and consumption power uh, that are Luxembourg, Denmark, Ireland, Sweden, Finland, uh, Austria, Netherlands, Belgium, Germany and France they, they are, have a very high earning power and consumption power and when we move towards the uh, countries like uh, which are in Europe they are poor countries like Romania, Bulgaria, Poland, Hungary, Croatia and Lithuania. So in general uh, most of uh, the Europe have a higher consumption power and higher purchasing power. So. Uh, in general, uh, when we talk about the import of goods and services in percentage of GDP in uh, Europe, so we can say that uh, European Union have around 50% of their GDP, uh, percentage of GDP is imported uh, from other countries. And among those, uh, I already discussed that Luxembourg has the highest percentage of imports that is almost crossing, uh, reaching 175%. Then is Malta, then is Ireland and uh, Slovakia, Belgium, Hungary, Estonia, Cyprus. And then uh, we move to uh, the countries uh, which have less uh, percentage of imports like Italy, because Italy is al also export fruits and vegetables. Then is France, Spain and Finland. Finland, Sweden, Germany, Portugal, Romania, Greece, Croatia and Denmark. We have relatively less percentage of uh, imports in their as a percentage of their GDP. So with this, uh, I thank you very much for your time. Uh, and uh, with this all information, I want to emphasize that uh, if you are a business owner or a small and medium uh, enterprise then you should uh, consider a European market uh, as a, a business uh, uh, business market because it have a great potential due to its number of uh, number of uh, habitants uh, 
uh, which are living in the Europe and also their consumption and buying power and their uh, share in agriculture you already see that is very less so they have to import fruits and vegetables for their uh, local consumption and so there is always a consistent and sustainable demand of uh, fruits and vegetables in the European market. Also, uh, there is uh, one advantage when you do business in the European Union that the same regulations applies to uh, most, most of the European Union countries. So once a product, fruits or vegetable has crossed uh, uh, the quality check and custom control of any European country, so the same product can move freely into any other European country without any further checking or control. So they also have a centralized system. So whenever a fruit or vegetable is uh, rejected or discarded due to any uh, issues, uh, quality issues or pesticide related issues, MRL related issues. So there is a database of European Union. Uh, you can see that uh, each day uh, the products, uh, fruits or vegetables of different kinds which are discarded or rejected at the entry point. So, so it's a comprehensive system, uh, a comprehensive business a place uh, for uh, SMEs uh, or enterprises, small enterprises to do business uh, once. The only thing is to know the relevant information, to get the relevant information and to get uh, uh, some uh, entry into the market and then uh, you are there then it's a sustainable business opportunity so if you want to get more information like this and more information about entry into different markets and different business options uh, please uh, you can sub subscribe my channel and i will be updating uh, you about the business opportunities available to different SMEs, small and medium enterprises and overall to individuals of doing business in different countries. I thank you for your time and understanding. Bye.